You see, the man with the bad haircut and the bry nylon shirt was happy with four wheels and a seat. In the 60s, he either bought a Cortina or he caught the bus. However, if 90s man chooses not to buy a Mondeo, there are any number of high-tech sophisticates waiting for a slice of his checkbook. So, should he buy the Ford? Well, first things first, it is not the most exciting car ever to grace this program, but the sheer number of people who will buy, rent, lease, and let's be honest, steal it, mean that we absolutely have to take a long, hard look. Nope, it doesn't get any better looking, but at least it's conventional. Ford hasn't tried to be revolutionary, they've played it safe. To that end, there are three different body styles. Five-door estate, five-door hatchback, and this, the four-door saloon. Even though the Mondeo is actually smaller than the Sierra, the boot is vast, and you can make it bigger still by folding the rear seats down. Mind you, you'd have a job getting big items through this gap. For that reason and that reason alone, I'd be tempted to go for the hatchback. Now, engines. Well, later there's going to be V6s and diesels, but for now, the choice is limited to just three. 1.6, 1.8 and 2 litre. They're all 16 valves and they're all made in Wales. But we won't hold that against them. Anyway, what we have here is a package that's about as conventional as a pair of corduroy trousers. Inside, things get better. Even if you ignore all the fruit on this model, the leather seats, the compact disc player and the air conditioning are all extras, you're left with a great dash, a Love the painted metal finish and the neat touches like the biro holder. You've got comfortable seats, tasteful upholstery, and no evidence whatsoever of sloppy panel fit. In fact, I only have one criticism. It isn't very spacious. Now, OK, I'll fit just fine in this one, but British models will have a sunroof, and that'll rob some headroom. And then room in the back is only really average. And that's about how I describe the Mondeo as a driver's car. All models have power steering, and though four-wheel drive will be an option, most are pulled along by their front wheels. The end result is a typical front-wheel drive handling package. Competent, but dull. The 1.8-litre engine is the best of the bunch, but it is a mite rough at the top end, and the gearbox is woolly. Goes well enough though, 0 to 60 takes 10 and a half seconds and top speed's 121. And 30 mpg is easily achievable, unless of course you have a penchant for wearing lead wellingtons. So what we have here is a car that's average. A car that does everything you could reasonably expect of it, averagely. If it was food, it would be a potato. Now in the past, Ford would have been content to stop right there and give this average car to their brilliant marketing department and tell them to get on with it. But you just can't do that anymore because you and I can spot an average car at 60 paces and will simply buy something else. This is why the Mondeo goes further. Much further. One of the options offered is traction control, so starts like that will not be on the cards. And traction control is just one of a huge list of safety features, which should make this one of the safest cars on the road. The doors get side impact beams, and most models have anti-lock brakes. But best of all, all of them have an airbag as standard. Crash, and in the blink of an eye, the centre of the steering wheel bursts open to reveal a huge balloon. Accidents could become as much fun as a spell on one of those bouncy castles at a fairground. No, but seriously, in the next 10 years, most motorists at some stage are going to drive or at least ride in a Mondeo. Some people are even going to be conceived in one. But happily, fewer people than might have been the case in the past are going to die in one. And nor, I'm happy to say, will many people come out of their houses in the morning to find it has been stolen. Ford say the security system should keep even the most determined thief at bay for four minutes. On top of this, it has more crumpled zones than a set of curtains, there are pollen filters in the ventilation system, and specially designed seats that prevent you from sliding under the seatbelt in a crash. 
This car is awash with the sort of details that in the days of the Cortina were the stuff of Isaac Asimov. And it is these details which should make the Mondeo the best car in its class. Providing, of course, the prices are right. They haven't been announced yet, but assuming it costs about the same as the Sierra, which seems likely, then there shouldn't be too many hassles on that front. Anyway, that is quite enough about Fords for now. We're off somewhere that makes even Britain's green and pleasant bits look positively dog-eared. <laughs>